All right, it may look like a mess, but all this shredded paper is actually a sign of great security. Shredding documents with your private information on it is key to keeping yourself protected. Today, Chuck Bell from Consumer Reports is here answering your questions about shredding and about identity protection. So let us know what you want answered. All you have to do is text your question. The number is 336-379-5775. You get to ask your question anonymously and you get your answer right here as we're talking. All right, so Chuck, shredding is more than just what? Cleaning out trash. Why is it so important to actually shred your documents? Well, in the age we're living in, there's lots of folks that are looking for personal financial information that they might wanna use for identity theft uh, and to run up a big bill on your account. Uh, so it's really important that if you have any sensitive financial papers that you, um, either store them securely or shred them and make sure that you don't keep things around that could put you at risk. And I know a lot of us are kind of, you know, used to keeping things in our file cabinet, credit card statements, bank statements, old checks, that kind of stuff. We probably need to let a lot of that go. Yeah, I mean, for most of us who have access to digital financial records, there's really not a lot of reason to keep those old credit card statements or canceled checks that uh, around that have uh, bank account numbers on them. So a lot of those things you could shred in the next month or so, any paid utility bills, paid credit card bills, any offers you get in the mail from credit card companies for loans, you definitely wanna shred those if you're not planning to use it. Yeah, don't be throwing those in the trash. They have your name on it. Sometimes they actually have the new credit card number that they were about to give you. Yeah, and unfortunately today, we know with the dark web, we have lots of consumer information that's been breached and is available to internet criminals. And so a lot of times they're looking for the other fragments of information that they can find about your address or your PIN number or your social security number. And so you wanna do the most you can uh, to have an efficient security strategy by shredding your papers on a regular basis. All right, well, we're gonna help folks out because tomorrow we're doing a shred for everyone, all right? So we wanted to make sure everybody knows about this. Free shredding tomorrow. That's at the Greensboro Coliseum from four until seven. We've got a three box or three bag limit. And that's pretty strict because I know a lot of people have been waiting for the shred. So make sure that you stop by between four and seven. And, and let me just give you a tip here, folks. You don't need to be there hours before it starts. If you're in line at seven o'clock and usually the six to seven hours, the lightest hour, we will shred all of your stuff. So no problems. All right, let's talk about for folks, whether they're coming to our shred tomorrow or whether they are shredding stuff at home, what kinds of stuff should we shred immediately? Uh, well, I would go back to the, uh, the loan offers, uh, anything with uh, bank account numbers on it that you don't need for tax purposes. Uh, so paid bills, uh, credit card bills, utility bills, all of those things you can shred um, basically right away as soon as you've paid them. All right, but then there's other things that we can shred up. We have to wait for like about a year or so to shred those things. Yeah, I mean, so some things you're going to retain uh, for tax purposes or because, uh, say, with medical expenses, it might be a while for your medical bill to be adjudicated by the insurance company and by the hospital. Uh, but after a period where the bill has been settled, uh, you can usually shred that confidential information. And if you would happen to need it again, you could get it by contacting the insurance company or the hospital. All right, so let me go to the other end of the spectrum. There are some things you should never shred. There are some things that you should keep all the time. Uh, well, certainly uh, documents that, I, uh, that are about your um, identity. Uh, you want to be able to keep that, like copy of your birth certificate, uh, your will. Uh, so uh, those types of things, you know, you might want to put it in a safe deposit deposit box or a secure place, uh, but uh, certainly, um, you know, records of vaccination, medical records, uh, certain types of records you definitely want to keep around uh, so you don't have to search all over the house for them. All right, so we're talking about a little bit of identity theft and, and, and uh, shredding and that kind of stuff, but let's talk about some other scams. What type of information are scammers just looking for overall? Uh, so a lot of the times it's really about people trying to trick you to reveal personal information that they can use for fraud. So they want to apply for financial accounts like credit card accounts on your behalf. And so they might be asking for uh, name, address, social security numbers, bank account numbers, uh, passwords are particularly a dangerous thing to uh, let out. And so if someone calls you from out of the blue, asking for personal information, a lot of times that is gonna be a scammer. 
Uh, and scams depend on having a persuasive story. So they often seem like they have a good reason. Uh, we Recently, there's been this uh, rash of uh, romantic fraud where partners approach you and uh, ask for money because uh, they got a bill that has to be paid. And it turns out that they're asking you to Venmo somebody who's a complete and total strange stranger with your with your money. So you want to avoid falling for that type of a scam. All right. And, you know, a lot of times we get all of these like robo calls and things of that nature. Their whole thing is to kind of like put you off kilter some, make you feel like it's urgent or make you feel like it really is the bank calling. And they usually have enough information to make it just a little bit believable. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of the times it has a sense of urgency attached to it. And so what we always want to warn people is, you know, hang up on that caller. Uh, go. If you have an issue, you think you didn't uh, settle something at the bank, you call the bank up yourself. You know, look up the bank's phone number and you call them directly or you, you go to their website and make sure you're, you're on their website. But when you uh, respond to uh, a robocall or a text or an email, you can easily get tricked by someone who's an imposter. Uh, another variant of this is the government impersonation scam where somebody calls and says, you didn't finish paying your taxes last year. Can you give me your social security number? Can you send me a payment right now and gift cards or crypto? You know, that's a dead giveaway. They're not calling on behalf of the government. So don't respond to those types of, uh, of pitches. Okay, all right. Uh, we are gonna be taking your questions coming up in the next segment. We're gonna take a quick break. 336-379-5775, we'll be right back.